Hello everyone, Lisa here, and we just reached 100 subscribers. If you're new here, I recommend checking out my original Lutris tutorial first. This video is more of a long-awaited troubleshooting guide which builds on my original video. Before we get started here, there are a few tips I'd like to mention. I recommend using a keyboard and mouse. This is because you can use the Windows key to get out of any install or game if it freezes. Now, if you don't have a keyboard, you can also try using the power button to bring up the power menu. And then if you hit B to exit, you should be able to move the mouse again. You can also try using the touch screen if the mouse is stuck. Like, are you sure you want to quit? And if you do, can me and Scoob join you? It's like creepy in here. If you end up having trouble closing an install or game, try using the Steam Deck's version of Task Manager to kill it. Kill it dead. And when in doubt, just hold down the power button until the deck powers off. Moving on to common installation issues. Now there are five ways to install disk games on Lutris. Mounting a disk image file, usually an ISO. Using a folder containing disk files. Hooking up a disk drive to the Steam Deck. Installing a game on a Windows computer and copying the files to the Steam Deck, and lastly, Lutris scripts. I find mounting ISOs or disk files on a Steam Deck very unreliable. I've run into a variety of issues and I've even had them unmount in the middle of an install. I've also had issues with some ISOs refusing to mount at all, and others mistaking Linux for macOS. For this reason, I prefer extracting my ISOs instead of mounting them. Some games are pickier than others and won't let you install them unless they think the disk is inserted. It's also worth noting that the way that Windows and Linux mount disks is different, so this could also cause some issues and you might have to use Windows for your install. Fortunately, most of the games I tried didn't care. When it comes to installing games on Lutris, most games will install fine. However, I recommend selecting full install when it gives you the option to eliminate the need for a disk. You might also run into some graphical issues. Sometimes elements on the screen won't load right. It'll just be like a white screen or a black screen and you have to move your mouse around to reveal things. Eventually, you will run into games that will refuse to install or keep crashing during the installation. In some cases, the game might have actually installed. If the game is not showing up in Lutris, you can add it manually. Find the Games folder on your Steam Deck, select the game, select C Drive, and depending on if it's an old game or a new game, it might be in a different program folder. If it's a relatively new game, it'll show up in Program Files. If it's an older game, it usually ends up in Program Files x86. Find the folder where your game installed. A lot of times it won't actually say the name of the game, but rather the company that made it. And then there's the game folder. From here, find the executable or exe file that's supposed to start the game. Right click on it and select copy location. Now open up Lutris, click on the plus icon in the upper left hand corner, click on add locally installed game, give the game a name, select wine as the runner, go to game options where it says executable, paste what we just copied. Now where it says wine prefix, Paste the path again, but this time remove everything until you get to the name of the game. So it should be something along the lines of slash home, slash deck, slash games, slash the name of your game, slash. Then click save and you're all done. If the game did not install at all before it crashed, you can install the game on your Windows computer. However, the trouble with old Windows games is a lot of them are not compatible with modern Windows and might refuse to install. In these cases, I've used older computers running Windows XP or Windows 7. If you don't have access to an older machine, you could grab a cheap Windows XP netbook on eBay. I got mine for under 50 bucks. You could also use VirtualBox. It's a free program that allows you to create virtual computers, or VMs, which can be used to install older versions of Windows. When you're done installing the games, copy the installation files over to the Steam Deck. Now you're going to want to copy these files over to your Wine folder. 
It should be in the Home folder. Now go to C Drive, and depending on the age of the game, you'll either want Program Files or Program Files x86. Paste your game installs in these folders. Now one at a time, you're going to want to go into each game folder and copy the location of the exe that starts your game. Then go over to Lutris, click the plus icon, select Add Locally Installed Game, input the game's name, and make sure the runner is set to Wine. Now go over to Game Options, and here you're going to want to paste the location of your game. And where it says Wine Prefix, you're going to paste that location again, but you're just going to want to remove everything after the dot wine. If you're trying to copy pre-installed games to your Steam Deck but can't find the Wine folder, all you have to do is attempt to install a game or program using Lutris, and this will force the Steam Deck to create a .wine folder. I got a few questions about this in the last video, and it's on me for not realizing that the Steam Deck doesn't come with a Wine folder, but rather you have to create one technically. In my last video, I also got a few comments about Lutris scripts, so if you don't know, Lutris scripts make game installs just a little bit easier, and they can also have some installation advice. All you gotta do is go to lutris.net and search for your game. Click the install button. A box will pop up, just click install on it, and tell Lutris where you want to install the game, and click continue. Now tell Lutris where the game's disk files are, and the installation will start. After your game is installed, I recommend enabling windowed mode before testing it in desktop mode, or add Lutris to Steam so you can test it in game mode. The reason for this is a lot of games can play havoc with the Steam Deck's resolution, screen orientation, or just lock up desktop mode. Windowed mode can also fix issues with games being too small on the Steam Deck screen, or upside down, or just not being centered. You can also use it to set a custom resolution, or just leave it on auto, which works fine for most games anyways. Now, a lot of CD games won't launch without a disc. Even with an ISO or disk drive hooked up to the Steam Deck, they won't detect the disk. Long story short, Linux handles disks differently than Windows does, but there are a few workarounds. In my Lucha tutorial, I mentioned using no CD cracks. However, not all games have cracks available. Some games can be tricked by having the disk files in the installation folder. Others can be more picky. Go to the game's installation folder or the .wine folder if you're trying to combine everything into one place. Find the folder marked DOS Devices. Now these folders function like drives and windows. Right click on the D colon folder. Change the default location to where the disk files are stored. Do not use a mounted ISO file for this. Now try launching the game again and it should think there is a disk. If the game is still stubbornly looking for a disc, try searching for the game on PC Gamer Wiki. This site gives excellent advice on getting games working on PC. If PC Gamer can't help, more than likely the game has some intense copy protections in place. I only ran into this issue in one game. I had to use alcohol to get it working without a disc. However, alcohol only works in Windows. If the game doesn't launch at all, right click on it and click on Configure. Here we can adjust the game settings in Lutris. If the game is 3D, make sure DXVK, VKD3D, D3D Extras, and DigiVoodoo 2 are all enabled. Alright, so that was a lot of acronyms, but long story short, these tools help simulate DirectX, which is required to run these old 3D games. If the game still won't launch, sometimes the wrong EXE is being used to start the game. Go to the game's folder. If there are multiple EXE files in that folder, try each one until either the game launches or you run out of files to try.
If the game finally launches, but there are some issues with the mouse, try enabling Mouse Warp Override. If you are noticing graphical issues or the game is crashing, you can try changing the version of Proton the game is using. By default, the version of Proton that ships with Lutris will be selected, but you can change it to System, which is the current version of Proton your Steam Deck is using. You can also install other versions of Proton using Proton Up QT, which can be downloaded from the Discover Store. Some other settings you can try to change in Lutris are disabling desktop effects, which disables desktop animations, allowing some games to run a little smoother, disabling Lutris Runtime, which is Lutris's compatibility tool, and enabling Prefer System Libraries, which uses the Steam Deck's native compatibility instead of Lutris's. If you find your game is running too slow, you can restrict the number of CPU cores the game is using. The Steam Deck features a quad-core CPU, but a lot of older games are made to work with a dual-core or even a single-core. Disabling these unneeded cores can increase performance in older games, since it allows the Steam Deck CPU to run faster. You can also try enabling Feral Game Mode, which is used to increase the performance even further. This setting makes sure that the Steam Deck's CPU and GPU are operating in performance mode. If the game is still acting up, try using CNC. This is a free program that helps fix compatibility issues. Download it and move it to where the game is installed. Run the exe file to change the settings. This tool has been very helpful in getting games working. I often just paste it in a games folder and it just works. I rarely ever have to tinker with the settings and usually I'm just hitting random buttons to be honest with you until something works. There's another tool you can use called Wine Tricks. So first you're going to want to go over to the Discover Store and download Proton Tricks. Once it's installed, go over to Lutris, right click on your game and select Configure. Now go over to the Runner Options and check Use Wine Tricks. To configure Wine Tricks, go to the bottom of the screen and where it says Platform Windows, there should be a little arrow. Just click on that and select Wine Tricks. From here, you can do a whole lot with Wine Tricks, more than I'm even capable of telling you. Um, but basically, this is a tool for power users who have researched why their game doesn't work, maybe there's some sort of file missing or something in Lutris or Proton, and this program essentially allows you to install it. If you follow all of these steps and the game is still not working, you can try playing older games on Windows on the deck. However, the Steam Deck screen only supports its native resolution of 1280 by 800. A lot of older games only work at 640 by 480. As a result, some games either won't launch at all, or will just appear in the corner of the screen. If you do find yourself in this situation, you can try using a program called DXWND. This program forces old games to launch in windowed mode, even if they don't support it natively. Since this program downloads as a RAR file, you're probably going to need to download something like 7-zip on your Steam Deck to be able to open it. Now all you have to do is open up DXWND, then drag an EXE file from a game you want to launch in windowed mode over to the program, and some settings are going to pop up. The settings that worked for me are right on screen here, so I checked early hook, run in window, terminate on window close, 
and I also checked desktop centered. This will just make sure that the window will be in the center of your screen. If you find there is a special resolution that your game only works at, you can put that in this program as well. It should be under window initial position and size, where it says W and H width and height. That's where you can put the resolution. You can actually launch the game directly from DXWND, or if you don't want to do that, you can launch the game from its disk or even the desktop shortcut. I know some games don't like the desktop shortcut with this program, but your mileage may vary. Well, that's all I had for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments down below, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask.